Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Coach Mike Husson. Hope you guys are doing great today. And today, you know, last night I put out an email to you, where are the appointments? And the question comes down to your appointments are in your lead follow-up. You know, we've talked about this in different areas over the last several hundred calls that I've done with you guys. And at the end of the day, guys, this is a an area that needs to be addressed for most people, not everybody, but for most people. And for even those who are doing well with following up with people and keeping them in the loop and setting appointments, hopefully we're going to get some ideas today that are going to take this to the next level for you across the board in your business. Guys, ultimately the questions that I asked are, why do I call prospects and come to find out they did something else? I'm calling new people every day, but I still fall short. And I have all of these leads, but I'm not getting anything as of yet. Why is that happening? Guys, at the end of the day, our business in selling is to find people and get them to appointments. It's what happens in between that makes the difference for most of the most, for the most successful people in our business, meaning that they figure out what they have to do to get business. They go after it. They, the second thing that they must do is qualify the opportunity to make sure that it's worthy of doing something with into the future. Three is to follow up with it as often as possible. And four, to go on an appointment once you've, once you've made the arrangement. Okay. So the question that I'm going to go over some points today, no specific order here, guys. Um, simply because, you know, in what we do every day and how we find our business and how we get appointments and how we close transactions, it's all a matter of the volume that you're wanting to do and the volume that you are currently doing. So it's important to understand why we, first of all, don't follow up with people. And I'm going to share with you some keys. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about working with people that you currently know and people that you don't know as of yet. And we're going to talk a little bit about understanding why we don't follow up as much as we probably could. I'm going to, again, nothing in order here except to understand that lead follow-up, guys, following up with people is a critical. You know, often people get overwhelmed with it. And I frankly get that because at the end of the day, we have access to so much opportunity that we have to sit back and decipher, you know, what, who am I going to call? When am I going to call them? Uh, I don't have the bandwidth to make that happen. You know, oftentimes, you know, there's people, you know, with the access to leads online today as an example, people get overwhelmed because they don't have the bandwidth to make it happen. Even with systems and infrastructure, there's still a need for bandwidth, the ability to make the time to follow through with people. And again, if you're out there generating online business, such as uh, marketing on Facebook or other venues that are going to draw leads in for you, or you're maybe buying leads in some cases, at the end of the day, guys, we have to have the bandwidth to make that happen. And it can become overwhelming to most people. And they get a lot of leads that come in and they sit there and they're going to, they're going to call a few of them. They're going to get some rapport going. They're going to get some movement forward on that lead and they ignore the balance of what they've got. So what we want to consider in this whole philosophy here is the understanding and the value of following up. You guys know it and I'm going to repeat it here. And if you don't know it, well, it's the first time you're going to hear it right now. 80 to 90% of your business is going to come as a result of following up with people. This is the biggest challenge for most people, the follow up in this whole process. So 80 to 90% of your appointments are going to come from following up. Yes, we would love for sure to talk to somebody for the first time, ask them a series of questions, get clarity on their motivation, goals, objectives, book an appointment, come on in, go on out, whatever the case is in your situation, and get a contract signed. That's the ideal world. But guys, that's a that's an exception. It is not a rule. And we've got to play within the rules, and hopefully that the exceptions will follow suit ultimately in this whole process. At the end of the day, 
it's very, very important that we understand the, the, that because 90% of the business that, con- that we get comes from the follow-up, that we have to have systems and organizations, organizational uh, processes in place in order to make sure that we follow up with people and we do it consistently. So that being said, because 90% of what we're going to be uh, getting is a result of follow-up, I'm going to ha- handle some questions today, very simple, and obviously there's more to it than me just doing a, a 10 or 15 minute conversation today. However, I'm going to share with you some of the key ingredients to making sure that happens. The first thing I want to address is what about our fears? And I wrote this down because this is a very, very important point that we have to make uh, make up with. Okay, We have to get clarity about it. And oftentimes we don't follow up with people because we have fears and those fears tend to hover around there may be other things but those fears hover around fear of rejection fear is sounding too aggressive fear of not being able to uh to to respond to people's needs meaning that you don't feel that you have the capability of helping them out And or, frankly, you have a fear that you won't have the time to service all of these people. And thus you limit, frankly, the number of leads that you'll even acquire in order to get you where you want to go as it relates to your business. We have a fear of not, we we have a fear of not being able to manage what we have, let alone get more. So we have a tendency to unconsciously sabotage our opportunities and our success. So we've got to make sure that we're clear about that. Do you have fears right now of rejection? I follow up with somebody, they say no to me. I follow up with somebody, they've gone someplace else. What are those fears that are in place? What are those emotional fears? Okay. What are your skill sets that you need to figure out to work on in order to overcome those particular fears? The fear of being too aggressive and seeming too aggressive and overwhelming to people. Guys, people are overwhelmed as it is. However, when, when, a, when something, and I've talked about this in other recordings, when there's a trigger, when something occurs in somebody's life and you happen along their lives in terms of your offering, whatever you're offering, real estate, mortgage, whatever the case is in your business, and they have an interest in wanting or having an interest in needing to do something, they put it out there. And at the end of the day, it is now your responsibility to aggressively follow up with that until something happens, whether they buy or, as they say, whether they buy or die. And representative of the fact that being too aggressive is not really the question. The question is the consistency in how you're following up. You can never be too aggressive and lead follow-up. You can never be overwhelming uh, to people when it comes to lead follow-up. Guys, the other thing, too, when it comes to being aggressive, oftentimes if there's a large gap between the time that you spoke to somebody and the time that you follow up with them, they're already engaged. The minute you get off the phone with them, they're already doing something else in their lives or maybe even searching for more opportunity, whatever the case is. So you're not at the very top of their mind. They don't go to bed. They don't wake up. They don't have dreams. They don't make plans around the dinner table about your following up with them. Now, the only why, the only times that happens, is no, those are exceptions, is when we've made a tremendous impact on them and their levels of motivation is eight or above in what they want to do. And they feel, when I say impact on them, you sound like somebody that they want to do business with. So it's okay to follow up aggressively with people because there's gaps. People are busy. They get caught up with other technology. They get caught up with their families, their work, their lives. And and, and even if it's a priority for them, they still get caught up because, again, it's overwhelming. And listen, guys, I'm going to give you a point here. If somebody says, my gosh, you're overwhelming or you're too aggressive, all you have to simply do is say, well, based on our previous conversations, you said that blank is important to you. Is that still correct? And they're going to probably say yes, assuming that's what the case was in the original conversation. And oftentimes, people just want to make sure that somebody's going to be there for them. 
and being aggressive is okay. So you can simply say to them, you know, Mr. Seller, Mr. Buyer, I am aggressive because this is what I do to help my clients get the job done based on what they want to do and what they need to do. So if I'm overwhelming to you, it's, it's not with purpose, but it's professionalism that I pride myself on. Does that make sense? And guys, if you explain that to people, oftentimes they're going to get it. And there's other factors such as your skill and, and what you're saying to them. You know, guys, as far as following up is concerned, again, random thought here. People, um, you know, following up is not a rapport building exercise. You know, yes, in certain cases, you're, you're calling them, you're connecting, you're building a rapport. And you're, sometimes people just want to make sure they feel good with you and comfortable with you. And that's a part of the rapport building process. But it's in, but in its reality, this is a, a business situation and your goal is to follow up them. So never be overwhelmed by being aggressive or feeling that you're going to be too aggressive with people. And I think the easiest thing to do there is one, make sure that you do it. And even if you, uh, even if you do call somebody and you follow up with them, it's important to understand that um, you have set expectations. And I can always suggest to people, if there is a follow-up required, arrange a time and a day to follow up with them. Set that expectation. Mr. Jones, call you in a couple weeks? No problem. Once you've figured out that that's the best thing to do between you and the client or the prospect, then establish a follow-up time frame with them, whether it's two hours, two days, two weeks, whatever it is, and then arrange a specific day and set the expectation of that day and of the time that you're going to follow up with them and then do it on those specific days. Mr. Jones, I'll call you back on the 15th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Is that good for you? Yes, it is. Fantastic. So I'm going to make a note of my calendar. Can you do me a favor and make a note in your calendar to expect my call? And then you can follow up with a text to confirm that time and then call them. If something changes for you and you can't, for whatever reason, make the two o'clock appointment, because that's exactly what it is, it's an appointment, then what I would suggest you do definitely is call them up in advance, hopefully plenty of time, and just let them know, hey, we had a call today at two o'clock, uh, a, a matter came up that is uncontrollable and we have to reschedule our appointment and I'll call you blank. And I would just follow up with them within an hour, hopefully two hours if you have that opportunity to follow up with them. As long as you leave a message, don't do anything where you set an expectation and don't follow through on it. They expect two o'clock, call them at two o'clock. Even if they don't pick up the phone, it really doesn't matter. So just a quick point on that to make sure. So let's quickly go through some of the keys that I want to make sure that we uh, that I ingrain inside of your understanding about doing lead follow up. Um, make sure that it's your not your mindset that's managing your leads. It's your desire. It's it's your it's the importance of doing the follow up that's going to get you appointments. Don't let it get in your way. Number two, speed to lead. All right, speed to lead. Oftentimes, people who are the fastest getting back to leads and the most consistent are the winners. Because guys, again, as I said a few minutes ago, people get caught up. They get caught up in space and time in their lives. And with, especially with technology today, there's so many things pulling on everybody's sleeves, including yours, mine, and everybody else. So speed to lead is very important. Example, if you get something that, if you get a referral from somebody, your speed is to call that referral up straight away. All right. Very, very important. Point on this is make sure when you're working with your referrals from your databases is that when somebody says to you, hey, I got a friend who wants to buy or wants to sell. Great. What's their name? What's their number? Do you know kind of what they want to do? Yes, no, maybe whatever the case is. And can you do me a favor to relieve your pressure, guys, is to have your referrer the person giving you the referral to call the referral up and say, hey, Mike is going to give you a call. Please expect his call. So when I call, whether I call their office or I talk to somebody else or whatever, you simply or talk to them, you just simply say, hey, Bill referred me to give you a call. How can I help you out? Very efficient way to make that happen. And then once you do that, make sure you follow up with your referrer. The people said, hey, I spoke to Bill. I called them. We had a good conversation or I didn't get anywhere with him or I left them a message. I just want to let you know and keep you in the loop. Just a quick point on the side there. 
So speed to lead, guys, is very, very important. Consistency is very, very important. Set expectations, I said about that. Sound enthusiastic when you call people, okay? Don't sound, I am calling to follow up with you, and I sound fearful that I don't want to sound and interrupt your day. Guys, be enthusiastic on each and every one of your call. Next, leave voicemails. Once you've made a touch with people, leave a voicemail, follow up with a text, send them an email, very much in that order. Verbal calling, leaving a voicemail, and then following up uh, with a text and an email is, is very helpful in order to make this work, okay? Make sure that you have a voicemail, very important. I call people all the time, even my clients, and I, and I even tell them, and we agree, yet they don't make their voicemails, and they don't create voicemails on their, on their phones. Not sure why. If you're trying to hide from people, they're going to find you. It doesn't really matter. You have a number, and that's what it is. So, guys, make a voicemail, an exciting, enthusiastic voicemail that when people do follow up with you and they respond to your information, adds emails, text, voicemails that you've let them, etc., that they're a place to go to, okay? Um, I'm going on here, guys, so if you need to go, go. You can get this recording at realprofitbuilders.com, but this is a very important area, okay? The FISBOs, if you're calling for sell by owners, you're calling expired listings, if you're in the real estate world, if you're in other businesses, this philosophy still holds true when it comes to managing leads. But I want to say this. If you're going to do for sale by owners, all right, you do your preview, you send a thank you, and then you follow up with a thank you call. So you're doing two pieces of follow-up. One is a thank you note, and one is a thank you call. And that's a very important thing. And then you should be calling them weekly or sooner as needed. Very important. Expired listings. I believe that you should call people seven to ten times after you've gotten the lead, after you've received it, after you've spoken to people, all right? If you haven't spoken to them, I would definitely consider taking that lead and putting it aside and calling them every day, two to three times a day for the next three days. That's not over-aggressive, guys. It's just a matter. Just put it in your bucket, and you got to get them on the phone anyway. So don't worry about that. Just keep doing that process. If you need to follow up with them consistently every uh, in the first couple of weeks, three to four times the first few days, and then a couple of times a week following the weeks two and three and four. Very important. Again, following up with them. So guys, at the end of the day, listen, following up is critical. All right. Following up is critical. Our purpose is to get an appointment. There's no need to go out and generate leads if you're not going to follow up with them. Because the worst thing that you could do is get a bunch of leads, have them sitting in your bucket, and then you finally decide after listening to recordings like this that one day that you're going to follow up with somebody and you pick up the phone and they said, hey, I did something else with somebody else I never heard back from you. It's better for them to say you're, you're being too much to me than to never do anything and they end up doing something elsewhere. We want to make sure that you do your process there and you are consistent with it. And guys, I think I'm wrapped up with my thoughts today. Just keep in mind, get them, follow up with them aggressively, and don't think about the word aggressively as a pressure. It's not about that. It's about helping people to follow up and get the, your goal is to follow up with people to help them achieve a particular goal or outcome. Okay. Guys, your competition who is not listening to this, who doesn't follow up, this is the win for you. And that's my final note here. There's a, there's a huge thought out there that you think that everybody is following up with everybody like I'm talking today. That is not happening. It's very important that we get that most people that you're competing with are not doing any of these things. And if they do it, it's very limited. Okay, they might call back once, maybe twice, but then they're leaving it on the table. And the person who is following through and following up consistently day after day, week after week, even month after month, then they're going to remember you more than anybody else because nobody else is truly following up. And guys, listen, the last thing here, even if 
if if you determine that it's a waste, then throw it out. Don't worry about it. It's okay. It's it's okay to get rid of stuff and put it in the garbage can. Get rid of it because you really don't want to clutter your business with too many leads anyway. I mean, the biggest producers in our business carry four to six, maybe eight leads at any given time, and they're doing 100 to 200 deals a year. All right? Oftentimes, we find the people that are doing the least business are carrying too many leads because they're never going to catch up with them or they're just hovering around them, not getting anywhere with them. So I know you guys are better than that. I know you can do this. It's very, very uh, important. Don't get caught up in the overwhelm with this. Do you want to buy or sell still? Yes, I do. Great. When can we get together? That's your script. Nothing fancy, nothing elaborate here. When can we get together and let's sit down and talk to see how we can follow, uh, satisfy your needs. I'm good today or tomorrow, which is better for you, what time, what location, let's make it happen. So guys, that's it. Go make it happen. Go have a great day. I appreciate you hanging out if you did. And uh, otherwise, make sure you go back to this recording and listen to it over and over again. Follow up with listening to this until it gets into your mindset. If you've got any questions, reach out to me, Mike at MikeHudson.com. Talk to you later. Go make it a great day. And even more importantly, make it a great week.